Well, welcome. It's time for midweek. I'm glad to see you here. Yeah, I can't see you, but you can see me. But today we are jumping back into, um, really going to cover chapter two and chapter three of Enjoying Intimacy with God by J. Oswald Sanders. So I hope that you have a copy. Um, <clears throat> you'll need a copy of the scripture tonight for our time together, but this book um, can very well be life-changing. So what we're looking at tonight is this idea um, that worship um, fuels intimacy with God, right? Like it is the fuel, worship is the fuel that um, fuels intimacy with God. Here's the problem. I think the problem is that we don't know how to worship, right? Like that's that um, that's a problem, right? If the worship is the fuel of intimacy and we don't know how to worship, you can see the problem. So we know how to um, ask for things, right, in prayer. Our prayer, we can ask for things. Let me, let me ask you, well, first let me read this quote. Um, let's see, it's on page 23 if you have your book. It's by John Scott. I thought this was really, um, really helpful. He says, but it is the area of worship that many evangelicals are most deficient. We evangelicals do not know much about worship. Evangelism is our specialty, not worship. We have little sense of the greatness of Almighty God. We tend to be cocky, flippant, and proud, and our worship services are often ill-prepared, um, mechanical, perfunctory, and dull. Much of our public worship is ritual without reality, um, form without power, religion without God. Again, oftentimes we don't know how to worship. Let me ask you a question. It's a quiz of sort. If you'll just look at maybe the last 24 hours of your life and look specifically at your prayer life, the things um, the elements of your prayer over the last 24 hours. What percentage of your prayers is anything other than asking God for things? Anything, like adoration or confession or praying back scripture. Like the reality is we're good at asking for things, um, but we're not so good at worship. Here is the good news, though. The good news is that um, worship can be stimulated, right? Or it can be stoked. I was thinking about um, our Appalachian Trail trip, right? That we went on the, the backpacking trip with a group of guys from here at church. And the first night we um, realized we got out our stove ready to cook for that night. I mean, we'd had a long day. It rained. Everything was wet. All the wood was wet. And we got to camp, set up, realized that our stove, um, we didn't have all the pieces. Some of the little pieces were missing. It wasn't going to work. Um, and so we had built a fire, we're attempting to build a fire, but all the wood was wet. And um, we spent hours, right, trying to um, stimulate or stro stoke this fire. I remember many of us on our hands and knees and, and, and blowing, right, to get the oxygen flowing, to try to get this little bitty flame to catch eventually, after I'm, I'm telling you it was a long time, um, eventually uh, we were able to stoke the fire enough, stimulate it enough in which we could then cook our food. Isaiah chapter 40 um, is going to give us some insight into how we can um, stoke that fire of worship and create intimacy with God. Um, first two verses of Isaiah chapter 40 say, Comfort, comfort, this is God speaking. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and announce to her that her time of hard service is over. Whew. Been in bondage, been in slavery, under the discipline, the hand of God. God says it's over. Her iniquity has been, listen to this word. <laughs> this may be one of the greatest words in our English language. Her iniquity has been pardoned. It's been pardoned. So the first thing that this scripture teaches us that we can do to stimulate or stroke 
<laughs> stimulate rather our um, worship is to focus or consider our assurance of pardon, right? Are you grateful for the work of Christ in your life? I mean, how, um, how thankful should we be? And as we consider our pardon, what has been done out of love for us by Christ, when we consider that, it should fan the flames in our heart for worship. I know that Lane, if she um, does something wrong and she's not sure, she wants to hear that we have forgiven her, right? She um, wants to know that our intimacy is not broken because um, we love her. We have to get down and, and tell her, we forgive you. We can move on. Um, past this. She thinks that it breaks that relationship, that intimacy. Um, and it does. And so we need to be assured of, your, of our assurance of our pardon. So if, if you um, aren't um, able to worship, if you aren't um, assured of where you stand with God, I would love to help you. Um, please just direct message me, let me know, and I want to pray with you and talk with you and help you um, have assurance of that. Number two, we're going to see is the necessity of preparation. Uh, this is important. It says verse uh, three and four here, um, a voice of one crying out, prepare the way of the Lord in the wilderness, make straight a highway for our God in the desert. Every valley will be lifted up and every mountain and hill will be leveled. The uneven ground will become smooth and the rough places a plain. Yes, this is um, also what John the Baptist um, uh, says in the New Testament in reference to him about um, preparing the way. Um, so when a king or one who had just conquered another nation um, was coming to town, um, they would have this advance party that would go before them. And part of their role was to make sure that the community, the city in which they were going, um, between the advance party and the city, that they would make all preparations for the king as he was coming, right? They literally had these giant excavation um, prior, uh, times, right? And they would do this, flatten things, make it an easy route for the king to come, for the conquering king to come and be with those people. And of course, they made all the preparations in the city uh, once he got there for him to easily, right? You don't want the, the king rolling in and, and hitting potholes, right? Like you want this to be um, an easy, um, clean thing for him to come. So the uh, root word of worship, which is what stokes our um, uh, intimacy, the root word comes from the word worth right? Um, it is uh, really of value. It's, a, it's, it's seeing the value in something. And I think that's what's happening as those preparations were being made for the king. They looked and they saw the value of this person um, coming and they made all preparations um, for this person because they gave him worth, value, assigned that to him. Um, how much more so is our king worthy of us to make preparations um, for him to, um, you know, to be a part. Think about it for a minute. I mean, if you know you're um, getting ready to, to you're single, you're getting ready to go on a date, or maybe you're thinking about your spouse. Like back when you were dating, what would happen is you got ready for a date, you would prepare yourself, right? Like hopefully you'd shower and brush your teeth, right, um, and make other preparations. If if family or friends are coming over to your home, what do you do? You clean the home. You uh, you know, take out the trash, you do all those things. It's preparation for that. If a guest was to come and um, to our church, we have thought through and made preparations. We want this to be um, a great uh, experience for them, and we do everything that we can. Let's look at page 31. There's a quote here in reference to that on page 31. <clears throat> he says, Anything crooked in life must be straightened any stumbling blocks removed, low levels of spiritual living must be raised, and rough elements of character polished, areas of neglect must be remedied, 
and relationships adjusted. This is something for which we alone are responsible. But the Holy Spirit will cooperate with us to this end. We have a role. Once preparation has been made, God's people could expect Him to reveal His glory. The sequence is natural. Cleanliness of heart brings clearness of vision. Only the pure in heart see God. Are we making preparations? Are we doing what we can to um, be sure that there is no sin left unconfessed, unforsaken in our life? Are we cleaning our proverbial hearts? Um, obviously, this is a work of the Holy Spirit, as he mentioned in here, um, but we certainly cooperate with him. If we want to enjoy intimacy with God, then we must do our part to make the preparation. So, uh, so let's do that. Number three, the transcendence of his attributes. I think if we want to fuel the the flames of worship, which will then um, cause intimacy with God. If we want to do that, then we need to look at His attributes. Um, again, Isaiah chapter 40 here that we've turned to um, gives us some real insight of some of His attributes. Not in full, not an exhaustive list, but at least some um, attributes that you and I can look to and can focus on and see the we're going to see that God in this passage where verses uh, 12 and through 14 is, is self-sufficient, right? I love that he does not need us. Um, he did not create us because he needed us, right? Um, he created us because he wants us, because he um, desires for us. We're going to see in this short passage that, um, that he's omniscient, right? Uh, that he, it means he's all-knowing, right? That there's nothing that sneaks past him. Um, there's nothing that he doesn't know, that he has all wisdom and all knowledge. Um, he's omnipotent, right? He's got unlimited power. There's nothing that he can't do. Um, let's look again at verses 12 through 14. Who, let's read it. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? The ocean's right there. Who's, who's measured that out? Or marked off the heavens with the span of his hand? who gathered the dust of the earth in a measure or weighed the mountains on a balance and the hills on scales, who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, or who gave him counsel? Who does he consult? Who gave him understanding or taught him the paths of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? The point is clear. It, no one is like God. He stands alone. And when we look at Him in that way, when we focus on His attributes and how different uh, than we He is, it will stimulate worship for sure. So when we see God's attributes, our appropriate response is worship. It's worship. I know... Most of you know we have this little dog named Lizzie. She's a Bashan Poo, right? Um, and she's been an incredible family dog. We love her deeply. But um, Lizzie understands this idea that I am different than she is, right? Um, she understands the, the difference. Like, I, I provide food for her. I'm the one that takes her outside, right? Or the family. Um, but she understands that, that she needs us. Um, and she understands that we are very different you know like we stand tall she's short right like we have the food and she doesn't until we give it to her um, she's in her crate until we take her out right like so she's learned um, who her master is and in doing in learning that she submits to me right it drives my family absolutely crazy they can try to catch her they can do all kinds of things she runs around she barks she will not let them catch her but if i say to her, Lizzie, come. Lizzie, come. That's all I have to say. Lizzie, come. And she comes straight to my feet, and she bows down. She bows down. And she submits, right, to me as her master. Now, I normally will pet her and love on her and all those things, but I'm literally the only one in our home that she quickly and easily submits herself to. She understands you are different. There's something different about you 
than about me. It's in the same way, right? Do we submit to God knowing that there is something different and we will bow to him in total submission? I want to end before our time in prayer um, with a final quote from page 36 here. It says this, Our debt to him is so great that no conceivable sacrifice would be too great to make for him. Since sacrifice is the ecstasy of giving the best we have for the one we love the most. So I wonder if we aren't able to stimulate our worship, is it because we don't love him the most? or someone or something else that has taken his place in our life that he rightfully deserves. Let me pray for you as this week you um, focus on these things that will stimulate um, worship, which again will create intimacy between you and God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the chance to gather online. I thank you for reminding us of who you are. Lord, help us to to really ask the right questions tonight. Help us to be able to stimulate worship. Father, we want to have intimacy with you. Lord, we want to see you as you should be seen. We want to view you as you are and as you have revealed yourself to us. Lord, we want to submit ourselves to you. We want to consider who you are and all that you have done. And in uh, so considering that, we um, humbly bow and worship you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your pardon. And it's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen and amen. We've got one song, and it is a great song, and um, it is called In the Sweet By and By. It's an old hymn, and so I hope that you'll stick around. And uh, this is Mike, and he has been with us on, uh, I think, at least once, maybe even twice. Um, He's a worship pastor from Clarksville and a friend of Josh's who helped him plant his church in Clarksville. And so I hope that you will um, stick around as we sing this song together. Thank you for investing some time tonight. There's a land that is fairer than day And by faith we can see it far For the Father waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore we shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed and our spirit shall sorrow no more not a sigh for the blessing of rest in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in 
the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet